Can GraphQL be used for big data solutions such as Snowflake? Yes, it most definitely can. And in this video, I'll walk you through the process of setting up a GraphQL API using Stepsen for a Snowflake warehouse. You can learn how to integrate or load your data from Snowflake and use it anywhere else using GraphQL declarative language. So let's jump in. So before jumping into code, we need to log into Snowflake to access our warehouse. And you can do this using your username and password, which you created while creating an account for Snowflake. So for me, it would be Roy Dirks test. And then of course the password I chose when creating my account. And you can log in via your own Snowflake URL. So the previous URL you saw, it's your URL to log into Snowflake. And when you first sign up, they'll actually create a couple of tutorials or sample databases for you. And what I will be using today is the tutorial to sample queries, which is this first one. So if you click on it, you will go to a worksheet. And in this worksheet, you can actually try out some of these queries. Uh, for example, you could get information on customers, uh, including a lot of different variables. And if you're looking at the query language they're using, it's pretty much like SQL. So once you're logged into Snowflake, meaning you've set up a Snowflake account and you're using one of the, um, the pre-filled databases that they've set up for testing purposes, we can actually use the credentials of our Snowflake account to generate our GraphQL API. And for this, we need to collect a set of information. Um, something I dislike about Snowflake, it's a great tool for having a big data solution for having a large data warehouse, but they made it pretty hard to find all the credentials you need in order to connect to this database from the outside world. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're going to be connecting our Snowflake user ID, or actually how they call it, it's called the account identifier. And you're gonna need this in order to connect to the database from the outside world. So you need your account identifier and then we also go to data and databases. And here we can actually find our database name, which is Snowflake Sample Data. And then we can select any of these schemas. And the SF100 or SF10, it shows you how much data is actually inside there. So let's go for SF100 TCL. So this will be your database name, Snowflake underscore sample underscore data, and then our database schema, would be this identifier. So make sure to copy this. So we're gonna be using this in a little bit to start creating our GraphQL API based on this Snowflake database. And then a the final thing you need, and you can find this under admin and warehouses, is your actual warehouse, which is called compute underscore WH. So with these set of identifiers, so our account identifier or database name or database schema, and then the name for warehouse, together with the username and password you created during setup, we were able to generate a GraphQL API based on the contents of our database. And for this, we're going to head over to the steps and dashboard. On the steps and dashboard, there's a section called getting started. And from here, you can basically create a GraphQL API just by following the prompts you'd see in your screen. So independently from our CLI, you can also follow the same steps in the dashboard and then we generate a CLI command for you that you can bring over to VS Code or wherever you have your terminal running. Uh, so where's your data coming from? For this, we're going to be selecting Snowflake and we need a couple of identifiers as we previously walked through. So we're gonna need our account identifier, which you can find in the Snowflake dashboard by going to your name down below here and then you can copy the identifier. And next to this, we also need a username and password. So these are the username and password that you created during setup that you also used to log into the uh, dashboard for Snowflake. And then of course you need your database name, your database schema, and the name of the warehouse. database is called snowflake underscore sample data and then we want to use this schema which is the um, SF100. Let's just copy this part, so our database name and then we add our database schema 
And then finally, we need the name of our warehouse, which we can also find right here in our Snowflake dashboard. As I told you in the beginning, there are quite some identifiers that we need to collect, but as soon as you have these identifiers, you can get started and set up steps in in order to work together with your Snowflake warehouse and generate a GraphQL API for its contents. And of course it needs the database name, the database schema, and then of course a way to connect to it, which is your username and password. So for the next step, the dashboard asks you to install the Steps and CLI, which you can install from NPM, and then you need to log in with your Steps and account and enter your admin key when prompted. And to enter these credentials, we're heading over to a VS Code project where I have an integrated terminal. In VS Code, I've set up a new directory called Getting Started Snowflake, and in here I need to install the Steps and CLI, which I've already done, and then a the second step is to log in using your username and admin key. Once you're successfully logged in, you can go back to the dashboard and take the second step. So in the dashboard, you can just press next step and you will get three new commands. The first one is initialize your project. So this will create the steps and configuration file. The second one is to actually import your backend. So this is the Snowflake database from a warehouse compute underscore WH. And then finally, we can type steps and start, which will deploy the generated GraphQL schema over to StepSense Cloud, meaning as soon as it's deployed, we can start using uh, this endpoint to get data using GraphQL. So let me copy paste these commands. The first one is StepSense init and go back to VS Code. In VS Code, I can just copy this here and it generates a StepSense configuration file with the name of my endpoint. Then the second command is actually much more important. It's the command to import the Snowflake database and generate the GraphQL schema based on its contents. And then the second command I need to copy paste is the command to actually generate my GraphQL API. And now steps and starts to introspect the Snowflake database and then generates a GraphQL schema based on whatever is in there. And if you see, you look on the right, you can see we actually have a GraphQL schema generated with a lot of different variables and a lot of data in it. Actually, if you look in here, you can see uh, different types of queries. You can see queries that use a more declarative approach where you're only taking the schema and the table, and you can also see sort of raw SQL queries in there. So these are a little bit more complicated. Uh, for example, when we want to have pagination, meaning that there should be some sort of filter anywhere in a query. As you can see, we try to limit and add an offset to the variables directly in this query there. So two sorts of flavors, it doesn't really matter which one you use because in both steps and will make sure that the connection to Snowflake is optimal and efficient. So to deploy the schema, we just need to run steps and start. And oh, small typo there, we need to run steps and start and this will take your GraphQL schema, deploy it to steps and cloud and make it available to query directly from the steps and dashboard. If you look on your terminal, you can actually see we have a set of endpoints. We have a curl command that we could already try from our terminal. And we also have a link to the steps and dashboard. But we're not gonna follow this link. Instead, we just press next step and we have the steps and dashboard actually check whatever we have deployed here. And we can also see it's running. And then there's two other steps we can take. We can either track performance of the GraphQL API by looking at the API analytics or we can start exploring using the built-in graphical, which is probably the easiest way because as you look here, what already happened is steps and generated a example query for you. So you can just run this query. It should work as expected. We can also try a bit more complicated query instead. So let's actually head back to our uh, GraphQL schema and see if we can find out what type of queries we'd like to use. So let's get back to the example that we saw in the beginning. We have a call center list that can query like this. We can get, so we can use a query called call center list and see what kind of variables we have for it. We can get the city, we can get, so we have country, actually do zip first. 
So CC zip and then CC underscore country. So this will get a sample list of data from some call center. As you can see, it has cities, uh, zip codes, and also the country. And if we look back at the GraphQL schema, we saw that this one was done completely declaratively. You didn't even have to give up the SQL query in your GraphQL schema because Stepsen is able to get this data out of your database uh, using the declarative approach. But if we look at our GraphQL schema, you can see we also have queries that have a raw SQL query in it or actually a Snowflake query, which is pretty similar to SQL. Uh, and if we will use this one, so this one is taking pagination, uh, we can actually try and do the same approach. So let's head back to the dashboard and try the query called call underscore center paginated list. We probably don't have to do much more. We can just add another underscore or like this actually paginated list. It takes two variables, it takes after, so we can probably do one there, after number one, or maybe try zero. And then we want to see the first five result because, well, from the default one, we probably got like 20. So first, I want to have the first five. Let me run this. After zero, we actually have a small error, error there as we typed something incorrectly. Let me see, after one maybe. Oh, we need to close it with a parenthesis. That's pretty cool. You can actually run this prettifier here, which would already check if we have any errors in our GraphQL query. And then we run it again. We should be getting the first five results. So this all works and it's using a slightly different way as it doesn't declaratively take the data out of the database. Instead, you have to define a raw SQL query. But when using steps in, you don't even have to write these queries yourself because when Stepsend is introspecting your schema, it will already generate these raw SQL statements for you whenever it ne it's needed. And of course, there's much more you can do. So I advise you to uh, read our blog post on using Stepsend with Snowflake and try it out yourself. Both Stepsend and Snowflake have free ways of using the product. So make sure to take advantage of that.